So many organizations tell us they have a challenge in finding performance measures for their balanced scorecard. And in truth, we don't think there's a problem in finding measures. In fact, a recent study indicated that leadership only looks at 7% of the data collected when they make their decisions. So the issue, the constraint, isn't about finding the indicators. The issue is about some techniques to help uncover what information is available that may relate to the strategic objective. We found that this simple trick of looking for the inputs, transformations, and outputs is an effective tool to sort that out. So here's the issue. Every single process has some inputs, a transformation, and an output. Even this learning that you're going through right now. The inputs are things like you and your time uh, and, and interest, uh, the web-based tool, our knowledge, the PowerPoint slide deck, the tools, and so on. Those are all inputs. And we could measure whether those things were available. Now, they probably wouldn't be good predictors of the output, but at least they're available. The transformation activity, of course, is your ability to fill in the forms, go through the learning, and so forth. And the outputs are, are you able to build a strategy map? Are you able to identify performance indicators? Can you bring your team along? And those sorts of things. So there's an abundance of data around the inputs, transformations, and outputs. The example that we've used before about using employee absenteeism as an indicator of uh, employee satisfaction fits in the same equation. It's an output. It's an unintended consequence of, uh, you know, bad bosses and environment and compensation models, uh, lousy work environment, and so forth. So it fits into a model where we could have chosen, instead of absenteeism, uh, you know, pay versus uh, industry averages, uh, turnover rates, a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, ultimately, we're looking for happy and satisfied employees, and there are many processes involved. So the indicators could come from many processes as we're looking for that overall outcome or value streams. So using this framework, we should be able to take any performance indicator uh, strategic objective in the organization and go through this process to begin identifying what some of the inputs, transformations, and outputs are. So we'll be using a template that looks like this, where you'll write down which the strategic objective is you're looking at, and then working with your team, begin developing some inputs, some transformations, and some outputs. So let's work through the example for WestJet that we've been talking about. So overall, it's the WestJet sample strategy map we're working on, and we'll work on the objective of fast turnaround time. So what we're going to begin doing is working with the team to long list a series of possible inputs. So for example, one input might be uh, the fuel truck on time. Because if the fuel truck's on time, that's an input towards the activity of fast turnaround time. Likewise, the galley truck being on time, the lavatory truck, and so forth. Uh, by the time we're done, we then can have a long list of strategic objective potential indicators based on the cross-functional team's perception of what's available. Now, it's important to note that we're not trying to judge whether these are good or bad. We're just trying to create the long list. During the next step, we'll begin to identify which ones are actually serious candidates to use. But without judgment, we have now a total of about um, 30 possible indicators to use around the strategic objective. Doing it this way has a series of benefits. First and foremost, it's zero-based. It avoids the assumption of what might be broken in the system or what's happened previously, or even being railroaded by one individual. It becomes a zero-based approach where we can begin taking a broad look at the overall objective. The example we've been using of absenteeism is a great example. If we looked at particular things that might have caused employee satisfaction issues in the past, we might have chosen an indicator like salaries or rewards or promotion opportunities. There we're trying to predict where the failure point is. Or we could be railroaded from someone who has recently done an employee survey or has some other uh, belief that they have better knowledge about the process than the rest of us. Secondly, it forces us to look across processes. It's not restricting us by what any one individual process delivers and therefore provides a wider, wider scope cross-functional opportunity. Again, absenteeism doesn't look at any particular process. It also provides you and the organization with access to many ideas. 
You'd be surprised at how often the best idea comes from people outside of your department. What it also allows us to do by having that wide access is much wider ownership of the final answer. Now it's not owned or imposed by the consultant or by the internal expert, but rather the entire organization. And finally, it generates a long list of ideas that we can then begin working through, as opposed to narrowing it down to one or two possible ones and discovering later that the data is not available or accurate or has some other constraint.